Hello, I'm Landon Schlangen, and today we're going to be taking a look at the SHA-1 password cracker. It's part of the information security projects. I'm going to show you what we're going to be making, go through it step by step. Uh, this is what we're going to be making when we run it. It'll go through our top 10,000 passwords and try and crack it. And as you can see, it runs all nine tests and completes them all. So let's get started. So to get started, go into the SHA-1 password cracker, and you'll be greeted with this. If you want to, you can read it. I'm just going to go and start it on REPL as a starter project here. So it starts in as boilerplate SHA-1 password cracker. And here's the assignment. Passwords should never be stored in plain text. They should be stored as hashes just in case the password list is discovered. However, not all hashes are created equal. So apparently the SHA-1 password hashing algorithm isn't very secure. So we want it so that when we pass in one of the hashes, it will return the actual text of the password. So in the case of this hash, it should return Sammy123. This hash should be ABACAB and so on. And then there's a way to make it a little bit more secure and that's with salts. And then we also have to be able to crack those ones as well. So the what we start out with is just this function, crack SHA-1 hash and they pass in the hash. We're also gonna have to pass in use salts and the default of that's gonna be false. So we'll pass that in, make the default false, and then we'll get started. So the first thing we have to do is be able to read the passwords. And to do that, I mean, I, I just looked up how to read a file in Python and came up with some interesting stuff. So the way to open a file is with this uh, with statement. So we're gonna do with open, and then we're gonna open our file. The file name is what top 10,000 passwords it comes right up and then it takes a second argument for like what kind of text you want it to be so in this case we're going to pass an rb and what this is going to do is it's going to change the text to bytes and the reason why we make it bytes is because it's what the sha1 constructor takes as an argument and we're going to do as f so that's the file and we're going to do line equals F dot read line and then we're also gonna have to strip it because it's gonna have a backslash n on the end of it and we don't want that and we're gonna say while line so while we have a, a next line we're gonna do array dot append so we're gonna have an array here and we're just gonna put all the passwords inside of it oh I'm in JavaScript land there we go array array dot append and we're gonna put the line in there and then we're gonna read the next line f dot read line dot strip so there we go that should read all the lines to see what it comes up with, I'm just gonna print the array and I'm just gonna return password not in database. That's what the default is for this. So like if it's not there, yeah, just return password not in database. I'll get that case out of the way and let's run it and see what uh, that comes up with. See if it reads it fine. Looks like it's reading it fine. It just takes a while to print it all out. Control C to interrupt it and then this X to clear. So that looks like it's working. And what I wanna do is since we're gonna be doing this more than once, I'm gonna actually put this into its own function. So down here, I'm going to do def read and add to array. And it, it, we're gonna pass in the file name and we're also gonna pass in the array that we want it added to. And then we're just gonna copy this down there. And then instead of this file name, we're just gonna do file name. And then the array is just gonna be the array there. And we can just change this name to the passwords array and then we're going to call read and add to array we're going to pass in the passwords so top 10,000 passwords and we're going to also pass in the passwords array so now it should do the same thing we should still be printing out all of our passwords and it's kind of cool you pass in the array and then you append to it and it actually updates the array that you passed into it it's kind of cool so i think that's pass in by reference so i guess that's what python uses let's run that and as you can see it works you can also hit stop to stop it all right so we're getting all of our text all of our passwords and it's as bytes now now what we have to do is use the hash lib library to turn them into hashes and then we need to compare it to the hash that's passed in so let's do that right here we're going to do four item in passwords array and then we're going to do hash line equals hash lib dot sha1 and then it takes in the item which is the uh, password i guess I, maybe i could call that p and then we want to do hex digest to learn more about this you can always look up hash lib or it says here learn more about hash lib here we can look into that 
And basically what we're doing is some of this stuff. We're going to do hashlib dot, instead of SHA-256, it's SHA-1, and then we actually pass in the, the text as a byte. It takes bytes, it doesn't take the actual text for some reason, and they kind of explain it at the start, but yeah. And also the hex digest function is on there as well. So that's the hash line. And what we want to do is we want to actually add this to a dictionary. So we're going to go passwords dictionary, and we're going to go passwords dict, put in the hash line, and it's going to equal the value of the password. To get the value of the password, we're going to do p.encode. Since we're turning it into bytes, we need to encode it out of bytes into UTF-8, which is just a standard uh, text. So that's that. And let's try printing that. Yeah, let's print passwords dict. What did I do? No attribute encode. Oh, not encode, decode. We have to decode it. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, since uh, the bytes is actually encoded, and then we got to decode it to UTF-8. Let's try that again. There we go. So here's the hash, and then the value is coach. So now all we have to do is see if this hash equals this hash, and then return the value of coach, or whatever it is, if it matches. So to do that, we're just going to do an if hash is in the passwords dict, then we need to return passwords dict, and then put in the hash. Yeah, and that will get the value. So we'll do that, and then it should pass a couple of the tests, but it obviously won't pass all, any of the salt tests since we're not doing that yet. So let's try this, and there we go. It did the first one, goldfish, and then the first four, I guess, don't use salts. But then the last four do use salts, so yeah, now we got to work on that. So to do that, we're going to put a flag up here. We're going to say if use salts. And then we're going to have to get the top salts out of this text file. So that's why we made this uh, its own function. We're going to say top salts equals an empty array. And we're going to say read and add to array. We're going to pass in what top salts and also the file name, which is known salts.txt. So there we go. Now we have all the salts, which are these bad boys. And then we're going to do a for loop. We're going to go for b salt in top salts. So the reason why I do b salt is because it's in bytes since we're reading it with rb. And then we need to do something here as well. We actually need to read our passwords again. So we're going to go for b password in passwords array. And what does it say on the markdown? It says it should be appended and prepended to each password. So that's what we're going to be doing here. And it has to be this double for loop because we have to check for each salt, every single one of the passwords, and then go on to the next salt and check every single one of the passwords. Yeah, it's, it's very uh, resource intensive, but I think it's the only way to do it. So we're going to go, we're going to do the prepended stuff first. Go prepended equals hashlib.sha1, and we're going to pass in the b salt plus the b password. So there the, the salt is prepended to the password as bytes. Both of these are bytes. And then we have to do dot hex digest to get the hash again. And then we're going to do the appended part. So appended, as you can imagine, it's basically the same thing, except b salt and pa b password are switched around. So there we go. Now we got to use these. And we're going to actually put this into its own dictionary just like this one was. So up here we're going to go top salt password or top salt passwords into its own dictionary. And then we're going to go top salt passwords, put the prepended ones on here, and then we're going to get the value of the password just like we did uh, down here. With p.decode, we're going to do bpassword.decode utf8. And then we have to do the same thing for the appended stuff as well. There we go. So that's a lot of stuff into that dictionary. But we can also just do the same thing as we did down here with the if hash. So let's just copy that and let's put it up here inside the if use salts block, but outside of the for loops. Oh yeah, I gotta put that inside. Make sure the tabs are all good. And then we have to do in top salt passwords and then change this as well. Top salt passwords. There we go. Is that all it is? If use salts do this. Otherwise, 
do this stuff. I don't know, let's try it out, see if this works. Oh, it looks like it's working. Let's go. There we go. Ran nine test in 6.719 seconds. <laughs> let's go. Actually, in my other one, I added another function for reading the dictionary, but I guess this is fine. We could even add an else, so like if you salts else do this, but there's really no reason to do that. And actually I hear that if you don't have to use an else block, then don't use it because it just makes things look more confusing. And since we're returning out of this if statement, if it's there, then we don't need it. Otherwise, yeah, there's the SHA-1 password cracker for you. It's pretty cool. Some of the stuff that was tough on this was, for some reason I couldn't just compare, like in a for loop, the hash to the, to the actual hash. So when I do this hex digest, what I was doing before was I just would check for each one of these inside this for loop if it was the hash and then return out of it if it equaled it. But for some reason that wasn't working and I had to use this dictionary and then do, do the if the key is in there then return it. I don't know, weird, but that's how it worked, I guess. Maybe this can be cleaned up a little bit better, but yeah, whatever. Anyways, if you liked the video, make sure to give it a like. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos on Free Code Camp. Uh, make sure to leave a comment if you're confused. I'm happy to help. And thank you for watching and have a great day. All right. See ya. Peace.